do you live in Canada? Are you presently in Ontario? I know that those are the truthful responses, and I'm going to see what a truthful response looks like from you during the, the administering of those 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 control or comparison questions. Okay, now when we were just starting the program there and the, the cameraman was signing, getting us ready, you started laughing at the screen. Was that because you could see my heart ra racing a little bit as, as the show was starting? What were you laughing at? Well, what I could see is that when they said that uh, we're just about ready to go, the green line, which, sig which, which signifies your changes in your galvanic skin response, I could see a certain amount of anxiety building up oh, is that as, right? as we were about to go into so, it. So is this part, this anxiety, you're measuring my heart rate, my blood, like what is it that what made you start laughing there? Well, it's just primarily the, the changes in your galvanic skin response. I saw a big, a big change in, in your galvanic skin. So that's your sweat gland. Does that mean that I'm nervous? Does that mean I'm excited? or Because I'm not really, I don't really feel nervous or excited no. when I start the show. I just no. feel like, okay, get ready. The pressure's on. You know, let's exactly. start. So and that's that's exactly. It's, it shows that there's a little bit of anxiety coming into play with regards to coming on air. The, the biggest misconception with polygraph is that it is a lie detector. It doesn't detect lies. What it does is it detects changes in a person's physiological nature when certain stimuli are put to, to that person in the form or in the sense of a, uh, a question. And uh, it's the examiner that makes the opinion. So if I'm telling a lie, all right, this is the big question that you've answered, that I, and I've lied, and it's obvious to you, that it's a lie. What is it that you're going to see on the graph you, specifically? You know what happens? I see a change in, in your blood pressure arousal. I see changes in your breathing patterns and your get the galvanic skin response. Why is that, Kevin? Because nobody wants to be called a liar. And if someone is caught lying, there could be a consequence to that lie. And a consequence evokes that fight or flight syndrome. The fight or flight syndrome is the changes in your physiology that, in fact, is there to protect us in the event of danger. And Kevin, lying is a dangerous situation to, to people because they don't want to be caught lying. And if they are caught lying, there could be a consequence to that lie. Okay. Now, I'm noticing, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but you're actually videotaping me on a mini webcam that's down there. What's the purpose of videotaping me? Is that for your own benefit, or I don't get it. What's the purpose? Well, it's, it, yeah, sure enough, Kevin, and it's a good question because I'm with a client for three or four hours sometimes, and it's to protect me against uh, an allegation of doing something improper during the test uh, by compromising the test, or it's to protect the client if the, if the client feels that I did something improper that would have compromised well, You know what, this is kind of like the situations I run into when I take statements. And they say, when you take a statement, the best statement is a videotape statement, and they say after that is a, uh, a recorded statement because, you know, it's always the same thing. How was it said? You know, when they gave you that answer, you know, did they say that answer laughing? Were they, did they mean it? You know what I mean? So exactly. I, I agree with, I, I agree with the, uh, the recording of it. So if I'm passing the test and you're asking me questions and it's obvious that I take it there's just no stimuli happening at all, just my regular... You're always, there's always going to be stimuli, okay. but you're, I'm going to see a bigger reaction to uh, the question that is most threatening to the person, meaning that I'm looking at where their psychological set is being, being evoked. So a person is going to feel more anxiety to where they're lying. Okay. Now, you did me, you said that you would do this test four times, right? Uh, yep. Sometimes four times. Four times. And is that four times in a row? Four times in a row. Am I allowed a break in between there? You take about a two or three minute break, and I release the pressure in the cuff to get you comfortable again, and then we start the. So test. let's say I'm gonna, I, I want to have like I want to take a glass of water. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I'm allowed to do that. Yeah. I'm allowed to go to the washroom. Yeah, by all means. Okay. By all means. Yeah. So they, so it's just it's like oh, I'm allowed. I guess I'm not allowed to have a coffee. Probably not. I either. would I would prefer not, and I would prefer yeah. people don't take a smoke break or go out and you know. Can consult with their, their friends or their family. Okay. Uh, once I, I begin monitoring their physiology, I want to continue with that environment that we set up for about the last hour and a half. So when we're done, is it the best out of four tests that you're... Oh, it's, a con it's, a, it's an accumulation of all four charts, all four tests that I look at. And the... Um, my, my, my society, say, my, the organizations that I belong to say that we have to have a minimum of three charts to make an opinion. 
uh, with regards to their, their uh, veracity. Okay. So. And you're saying the whole process, depending on how complicated, takes four hours would take, sorry, question, four tests would take how long? It takes a, a, about 15 to 20 minutes that a person's actually attached to the instrument, okay. maximum. All right. Now, when we're done, okay, what are you giving to the client? Are you, like, emailing him the file? Are you writing a report? Are you giving him a videotape of all this? Like, what am I getting? If I'm a client, I'm a lawyer, I hired you to do this, what are you going to give me in return? What I'm, going to give you, I'm going to give you a report that says what the exam consisted of, uh, the, uh, the comparison questions that were, that were used, the relevant questions that were used, and the, uh, my opinion as to whether or not you're telling the truth to the relevant questions. Okay. And uh, the computer program also has uh, an algorithm built in that will will look at the polygraph charts itself and, and render a computerized opinion. Okay. Now, um, let's say, for example, um, I'm, I'm on this test and we're done, and we're in a trial situation now, okay? And let's say for this particular situation, a civil trial, and you're acting for the defense, and you say, look, you know, this guy passed the test. I don't think these allegations happen based on my examination, all right? And now... Me, the plaintiff, I want to bring you into court and say, look, you know what? I want to take this guy apart. I want to know everything about him. I want to know whatever. Have you ever had that where people try and challenge your credibility and challenge the polygraph? They've allowed it to come in, okay, but they want to say, look, I can take this guy apart. We'll, we'll take this apart. I mean, we see a lot of this in trials where, you know, you have evidence, and it's pretty damaging evidence, meaning, like, look at, you know, he's done the test. He passed it. What do you got to say now? Have you had any real challenges? In some ways, it's been absolutely yeah. vicious in their attack on you. Yeah, it w when, when I was in policing, I had some challenges during the preliminary inquiries where they, in fact, would look at the results of the polygraph, and I was challenged as to how I came to that opinion. I mean, in your career, like I mean, I've had, I've been up against some vicious lawyers who have tried to take me apart on damaging evidence, and and they just. You know, they come after everything. You know, they'll take your resume or your curriculum for pay, and they go nuts on it. You know, they'll, they'll go right back to the 70s and stuff like that. So is, is, are you finding by way of a pattern that it, it's accepted, or are you finding people challenge it, or there's no pattern? Or There really is no pattern. Yeah. There really is no pattern. You know, it depends on case by case. Okay. Now, we're just about done. Anything else we need to know on the demonstration side before we... No, I think I think you did rather well. And, I did well. Uh, well. It looked like I did well. It looked like I did very badly. Well, you're you're yeah. You know, when you're moving around, it's uh, sure. we we tell people that they have to be still. And again, that green line is uh, showing that you're okay. having a little bit of anxiety. Now, um, tell us just before we finish up a little bit about your company. Um, now, your website is TorontoPolygraph.com, dot com, correct? Right. And like, what have you done in the past, and what are you doing now? What are you working on now? Like, what, what's your background? Like, now, in the green room, you had indicated that you've done work for the mining community before. I have. Uh, I have a company with two other chaps. Uh, we call ourselves MWM Investigative Training, okay. and uh, we train regulatory agencies or regulatory groups, uh, and uh, we train um, government agencies on how to survive cross-examination from from lawyers how to properly prepare their notebooks, and how to interview people uh, successfully to identify a verbal, nonverbal, and written communication uh, to determine the veracity of an individual. So we have a company that provides us. And our latest, our latest client was with MASHA, the Mining uh, Aggregates and Safety Association. So you've done work for MASHA because we all know that here very well. Okay. Yeah. And sure. we've done work for MASHA, and we've just trained a group of MASHA folks on uh, surviving cross-examination and uh, proper notebook uh, presentation preparation. Okay. And uh, are you doing any training now, or? Yeah, we're doing. We do training throughout the country uh, through uh, the British Columbia Safety Authority. We've done uh, uh, regulatory groups, uh, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Environment. Uh, so I'm sorry, you said you've worked, for the, you've worked for the Ontario government, have you? Yes, we do, and we, we, we currently do. Wow, okay. And primarily these bodies of government, are these like the people that enforce various acts of the government? Like who are they? That you're yeah, they're, 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 again, Kevin, they're, they're, they're people who go to, to look at compliance with regards to the regulations. Okay. And, and uh, we've, we've worked with the Ministry of Finance, with their auditors, uh, Ministry of the Environment, people who, uh, who are inspectors. And it's primarily, just to recap, so if someone wanted to hire you to come out and talk, then you're dealing with interviewing, notebook preparation, interrogation, how to survive. I, I think I would like to take the course on how to survive uh, being cross-examined. Sure. And, you know, and my partner, Robert Montrose, is a... Uh, is, uh, 10-year homicide uh, veteran with the Toronto Police Service who has seen a lot of that, uh, uh, you know, courtroom preparation and surviving cross-examination. And my other partner is Andrew McKay, who is a, who is a defense lawyer. 
Oh, so you actually have a lawyer on staff with we you? We do. Staff. Okay. Yeah. So people want to find out or get uh, – now, do you go – are you are they coming to your area? Are you going to them? We're, we're going to them. We're going, going to them. And how long do these courses take? Does it vary? Or? Well, we, uh, right now we're, uh, we, we're doing uh, work with the Ministry of the Environment or the Ministry of uh, um, Labor. It's a four-day course on how to, how to uh, uh, administer – uh, interviews uh, okay. to de detect deception through verbal, nonverbal communication. So we do everything from a one-day session to a, to a week session. Okay. And the website's torontopolygraph.com, and Toronto. you can find out about it there. If By all means. Okay. All right. So join me next time. Now, we've got a bunch more uh, interesting guests who are going to come on the show with respect to giving um, expert evidence. Um, if you want to find out more about Polygraph or you would have any questions, please feel free to go on our guest website. My name is Kevin Buscain. You've been watching Undercover. Thank you very much for coming.